Hey guys, long time no see. For me, today is a very special day, an exciting day. And why is that? Because I think I invented something. So, without further ado, this is how a retro console uh, looks, right? Like this, or maybe like this. The directional buttons and action buttons on the same plane with uh, the screen. And many times, well, all the time, display, it's a very small one, as you can see. So if you want to play older games on the go, those are your options. Or maybe, maybe, you can play with something like this. But you won't have physical buttons. You will have to rely on the touch screen. And this is, well, at least in my opinion, it's not acceptable. So, I invented this with a bigger screen. Let me just power it up. Well, I can say with a huge ratio of screen to, to body. And uh, I wanted to look minimalistic. And on this plane, it has also physical action buttons with start button right here and on this plane directional pad with select screen and it has right and left volume minus volume volume down volume up and the menu button for the screen let me show you how easy it is to grab it and to almost no hands it's very very comfortable when when you'll play it you'll hold it like this or like this as you can see plenty of room for my fingers just select the game and i will show you Again, the profile of the console. Mario. Now we will compare its size to this Sega Nomad. This is the Nomad, and this is the icon, as I call it, or I controller. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's smaller. It's smaller in size than the Nomad. And look at the screen difference. We will fire up the Nomad on this one. To see how great the difference it is. Well, to be honest, one is some somewhat older than other. And one starts up faster. <laughs> Let's turn it down. Well, it's done. This one started as well. And you can see the difference between them. Them. I don't know if it's showing, but this display is gorgeous. It's truly gorgeous. And it's uh, HDMI quality. Flawless. This one is old, but surprisingly playable
Okay. Let's see. Let's continue the comparison. This is the thickness. Okay, enough for the Sega Nomad. We'll close it. And we'll concentrate on this one. I'll try to play looking at my the screen of my phone. So bear with me here. No, no. Hold it like this to be able to play it. This is the way it will be held. By the way, it's pretty comfortable. I have enough room here and there. Okay, so let's start. As you can see, I can perfectly play it. It's it's better than I remember. <laughs> There's some more. I am. I don't know if you can see the real quality of this screen. It's incredible the the overall experience it's just so good so enjoyable well i'm not so good but you have an idea of what the gameplay is so now we'll start, press start and select to exit. Okay. I'll just... Alright. Okay, so we'll try other systems to, to see how well it performs. I have some games installed in here. I'll try to find Super Mario. Uh, no. This is the nest. It's okay. This is the nest for you. It's perfectly playable. I will, I will exit this and search for the Super Nintendo one. OK. 
Okay. Believe I was looking for this one. Let's adjust adjust the volume. So you may hit it. Okay, let's enter here. Just to see how how it looks and how it plays. not a very comfortable position because I'm trying to record in the same time but it's very very playable trust me okay this was Super Nintendo and we will take a look. We can take a look at the Dreamcast also. What? But first, first. Okay. We look at the PlayStation one with some. Maybe Dino Crisis. And now we'll get to take a look of the inside. Let's see how it's built and what makes it tick. Still open. It has four screws, which I took apart. Those are, this is the soundproofing, so the sound will not escape in an unwanted manner from the, this, the case. Those are the speakers. I uh, I try to build it in a modular fashion for a eventual streamlined production. This is the left directional pad, and those are the buttons. Yes. Now I will I will shut it off. So I'll not make a short circuit. And this, this is removable. Just like that. I just took the Raspberry Pi part out of it because I just took the Raspberry part of it because as I said it can easily be removed and what I done I just design a circuit to connect a connector from the Raspberry to all the functions, then especially the power supply and the, the buttons. And 
this is a custom cable for the HDMI output for the monitor it connects directly to to the onboard uh, HDMI connector of the Raspberry Pi and that's not much of it that's all oh and uh, the um, the uh, battery is behind this display circuit right here okay i adjusted the tripod to see a little better Skip the intro. I don't know if I have a say, but let's see. No, I, I don't have no save, so we'll start a new game. And look at this. Beautiful colors, rich colors. Let's try to skip it. Skip again. Seven, seven. Okay, this is the first checkpoint. Playtime is officially over, kiddies. Something's wrong. The lights in the guardhouse are out. I don't know if it shows, but the resolution is great. I can, I cannot skip it. This one, no, I really can't. Stay here, Junior. Leave the guards to me. Hey, did you hear what he just called? Forget about it. Just let Gail handle. The battery, if I remember correctly, it um, uh, it powers it for uh, for some uh, six hours, five or six hours, but I I think more than six, realistically, and that's it. Now. We will just put it where it belongs. Monks, its brothers. And for the next video, I will show this Game Boy Zero and why it's unique. Because this Game Boy has something that I believe no other Game Boy has and what's what it is you'll see in my next video thank you so much guys for watching the whole video join me next time to see what makes this Game Boy so special so special dun, 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 dun.